Hey everyone, I'm Dalin Hassan. Welcome to the show where this week we are inspired by the scientific world. A bit later on, we'll ask where would we be without the rechargeable mobile phone battery and find out why the man who helped invent it missed out on millions. The French government at that time didn't consider the invention of graphite as a major invention in 1980. But first, Selim Said explores how the bygone boom time for innovations and inventions from the Middle East region may be set to return with a new wave of science education. Since the 7th century, countries of the Arab world experienced a golden age of scientific discovery, which saw world pioneering medical and cultural advancements. Yet more recently, the Middle East and North Africa's contribution to global science and engineering publications was only about 2%, according to a 2013 Harvard study. Regional conflict played its part, eroding some MENA countries' intellectual community. A lesson Ahmed from Iraq learned all too well when he was in school. My teacher did not believe in uh, the theory of evolution because they believed that uh, this uh, theory was made by uh, the West to affect us and make us forget about our religion. Ahmed, an engineer and geologist by trade, strongly disagrees and says science is key to an open-minded society. In 2011, he created I Believe in Science, an online platform with more than 3 million followers and 15,000 scientific articles translated to Arabic, breaking the linguistic barrier to knowledge. And about two years ago, he joined Beit al Hikma 2.0, an initiative using social media to reach regional people of all ages with the hope of enriching Arabic content online. Baghdad's 8th century House of Wisdom, Beit al Hikmah, was an institution of scholarly discourse and invention. And that's exactly what Ahmed hopes to replicate. We want to create more and more researchers and more teenagers and people interested in science. Maybe we can somehow return uh, the glory of uh, scientific golden age that we once had a few centuries ago. Recognizing many people are offline, Beit al Hikma 2.0 recently used hardware to inform people about safe practices during the COVID-19 pandemic in Baghdad which proved challenging as years of misinformation had shaped people's way of thinking. Many people, as many know, didn't even believe that there was a virus. And some of them believed that it was imported from outside to control their life. The information we shared helped them realize how serious the COVID-19 was. With the information, tens of thousands of masks were also distributed. Inspiring minds with science is something you can never start too early. And some in the region are equipping young students and learning institutions alike with the right tools to build better life opportunities in the future. This is the goal of Saudi Arabia's Ithra, which means enlightenment in Arabic. The cultural center both teaches science and shows students what doors the discipline can open. Their southern border initiative is educating about 20,000 students in the regions of Najran, Jizan, and South Asir equipping teenagers with job skills for engineering and robotics, and practically applying what they learn instead of just doing homework. Teaching why science is useful is just as important as teaching the subject itself, says one of Ithra's members. One of the students, he transferred the knowledge he received through uh, Ithra educational programs into practical solutions. For example, he invented a device uh, to communicate with his father who has no signal uh, in his area. It's really heartwarming when you see these young minds harnessing this knowledge to uh, create solutions for the problems they are facing uh, in day-to-day -day lives. Braiding strong bonds with science early on, says Noura, is how her organization plans to equip young Saudis with the ingenuity to discover tomorrow's solutions. Now it's time to meet an imminent North African scientist who you might like to thank for your mobile phone's full battery. So, phones down and eyes up for a technology and science lesson with the Professor Rashid Yazimi. Rebecca mclaughlin Easton has more. Born in Fez, Morocco, Rashid Yazimi's scientific curiosity was piqued through geology as a child. In the years that followed, the bright student went on to earn his doctorate in France, and aged just 26, he became the first scientist to make a discovery which eventually led to the lithium graphite anode, now commonly used in commercial rechargeable batteries found in mobile phones and laptops. 
And today, the academic estimates that around 95% of the batteries produced globally use his anode. Rashid is the recipient of many awards, including the Draper Prize, the equivalent of a Nobel Prize for engineers. Whilst in the Gulf region, his academic advancements have seen him receive the Takrim Award for Science and Technology, plus the UAE's prestigious Mohammed bin Rashid Medal for Scientific Distinguishment in the field of sustainability science. The 67-year-old, who is now the principal scientist at Nanyang Technological University in Singapore, jokingly remarks that he has two marriages, one to his wife and one to science. And it's his journey into the field which opened up my conversation with the professor who was in Singapore for Inspire. Rashid, what was your eureka moment when it came to discovering your invention with the lithium battery anode? I still remember the day I opened my battery and I saw that graphite, my anode, was, has become uh, gold color. And I said, oh, like it's alchemistry. I converted graphite into gold. And of course, it was uh, an exciting news because uh, I didn't realize at that time, but uh, my professors realized that actually this is a turning point in the uh, uh, battery history that uh, we can store now lithium into graphite and it is safe. So uh, the, it took actually industry about 11 years from 1980 when I discovered the graphite anode to uh, a major uh, Japanese company that commercialized the lithium ion battery in 1991. Well, that brings me perfectly to my next question because some analysts value the commercial lithium ion battery market to be worth in excess of $80 billion. Do you, as an inventor, see enough of a return on such an amazing invention? International recognition, yes. I think um, all my colleagues, the people who know, the history of lithium ion battery recognized that I am the inventor of the uh, graphite anode that made batteries become uh, rechargeable. Now, if you are thinking return in dollars, I would say no, I am just a poor scientist because uh, for uh, some reasons, uh, the, uh, the French government at that time didn't consider the invention of graphite as a major invention in 1980. So uh, they denied my uh, patent application. So we didn't file a patent, which means that uh, the Japanese companies can, could use my invention for free. As an inventor, you do have more than 150 patents to your name. And looking at patents in this region, Saudi Arabia and Turkey seem to be leading the charge. But of course, China is far ahead of everyone right now. How do you see the trends progressing in the coming years, specifically for the MENA region and in what areas of invention? There are many, many projects to build uh, so-called uh, gigafactories in, uh, in, uh, in Europe. But little by little, also in the uh, MENA, you know, the uh, uh, Middle East and the North Africa area, uh, there are more and more interest in um, in batteries because basically the ingredients to make batteries are mostly in Africa, uh, like a cobalt. So now I think the it becomes like natural that uh, you know, the MENA countries start to get interest and invest in the lithium-ion batteries as the future alternative for uh, the energy revolution. Rashid, what is the next frontier for your battery research? Uh, how might AI also play a part in further exploring its capabilities? If we combine muscles with brain, we can make what I call now augmented batteries. That's actually the brain can manage the battery so as Number one, battery can last longer. And the last one is uh, for the electric mobility, for electric cars, is the uh, fast charging. We need to charge batteries in very, very short time, the same time as we spend in the gasoline station when we fill our tank. Rashid, you're no stranger to the United Arab Emirates. You've been here many times. You've also received accolades from some of the ruling families. Are you working or collaborating on any scientific projects here? I want to see whether some of the my invention can be developed in the Emirates, uh, like uh, fast chargers and also uh, 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 batteries with uh, uh, 
uh, artificial intelligence, uh, this kind of things. The market is huge. And I think uh, uh, the Emirates, uh, together with other countries, neighbor countries uh, like uh, Bahrain and Kuwait and Saudi Arabia, are very keen actually to uh, develop these technologies in uh, either academic uh, area for uh, research and also for industry. Lastly, to what extent, if any, is there a degree of academic or scientific snobbery when it comes to established seats of learnings, and especially the new emerging hubs like here in the Middle East? Their, their, their ranking has been improved significantly the last uh, four or five years, which is excellent news. That means that they, they, they are in the, the, the right track. It will take maybe 10 years before we have uh, uh, an Arab university uh, among the 50 top universities in the world. And who knows, maybe one day the Moroccan will choose to make the Middle East and North Africa his home again, to perhaps share his expertise with the next generation of students who are as charged up about science as he was at their age. Well, that's all for this week. We hope our episode left you fully charged. As a parting gift, here are some scientific feats we discovered on Instagram. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Man from Saudi is hard at work in the chemistry lab. Emirati May loves engineering in Abu Dhabi.